The next type of polynomial factoring I'm going to talk about is factoring by grouping. We use factoring by grouping any time that I have a four-term polynomial. And sometimes four-term polynomials you cannot factor by grouping. But this method, um, if you can factor by grouping, um, I will show you. Okay, so there are, what we're going to do is we're going to put parentheses around first two terms and last two terms. with a plus sign in the middle. Then we're going to factor the GCF from each set of parentheses. And then we are going to combine the GCFs to write final answer if possible. <coughs> and we'll talk about what that if possible means when we work through our examples. Okay, and again, just like the factoring with greatest common factors, factoring by grouping, the I gave you the rules, but I need to show you some examples. Make sure you do these examples with me. First one, 3n cubed minus 8n squared minus 6n plus 16. So step one says to put parentheses around the first two terms, parentheses around the last two terms with a plus sign in the middle, parentheses around the first two, Parentheses around the last two, plus sign in the middle. Step two, factor the GCF from each set of parentheses. Okay? GCF said, what's the greatest common factor between 3 and 8? Just one. Then I write down the lowest power of every variable that appears in every term. N's appear in both terms. The lowest power of N that appears in both terms is N squared. Then I do the division. And I get 3 in minus 8. Then I do the same thing for the second group. The biggest number that goes into 6 and 16 is 2. And when I did the factoring by GCFs, I said if the first term is negative, you're going to pull the negative out. So I'm going to pull a 2 out, negative 2 out. Then I do the division. Negative 6 divided by negative 2 is a positive 3n. 16 divided by negative 2 is minus 8. So I've done the second step. The next one says combine the GCFs to write the final answer if possible. The only time it's going to be possible if, is what's inside your parentheses are identical. Right here I've got n squared times something minus 2 times that same something. So I can write that as n squared minus 2 times that something. Okay? So that's the basic steps for factoring by grouping. I'm going to do several more examples. Let's do 14r cubed plus 4r squared minus 35r, minus 10. Step one, parentheses around the first two terms, parentheses around the last two terms, plus sign in the middle. Step two, find the greatest common factor of each group. Biggest number that goes into 14 and 4 is 2. Then write down the lowest power of the, each variable that appears in every term. Lowest power, the low, r appears in every term and its lowest power is squared. 
due to the division. 14 divided by 2 is 7. R cubed divided by R squared is R. 4 divided by 2 is 2. R squared over R squared is 1. Repeat for the second group. The biggest number that's in common between negative 35 and negative 10 is negative 5. Again, because that's negative, I want to put the negative sign there. R does not appear in this term, so there are no variables. Divide each term by negative 5. Negative 7, 35 divided by negative 5 is positive 7, R. Negative 10 divided by negative 5 is positive 2. Step 3, combine the greatest common factors to write the final answer if possible. Check to make sure what's in the parentheses are identical. If so, you're going to combine what's outside the parentheses and multiply it by what's inside the parentheses. Sometimes factoring by grouping is just going to be the first step in a factoring problem. Okay, I have, um, You may not have seen factoring out after you know, other methods of factoring besides GCFs yet, but if you can continue to factor something after you factor by grouping, then you're going to want to continue factoring if I tell you to factor completely. If I just tell you to factor by grouping, then you can stop after this step. I'm going to do at least two more, probably three more examples. Make sure these examples are in your notes and that you, um, if you need to, write down these steps and say these steps every single time that you do these problems. Next one, 8MC minus 24MK plus 5 NC minus 15 NK. Step one, parentheses around the first two, parentheses around the last two, plus sign in between the two. Step two, factor the greatest common factor out of each set of parentheses. Biggest number in common between 8 and 24 is 8. Then I write down each variable that appears in every term to its lowest power. In this first group, M appears in every term. The lowest power is the first. C only appears here, so I don't use it. K only appears there, so I don't use it. Then I do my division. 8 divided by 8 is 1. M over M is 1. That leaves me with the C. Negative 24 divided by 8 is negative 3. M over M is 1 and leaves me the K. Plus, the greatest common factor of 5 and 15 is 5. And then each variable that appears in every term to its lowest power. The only variable that appears in every term is N, and its lowest power is the first. Then I do the division. 5nc divided by 5n leaves me with a c. Negative 15 divided by 5 is minus 3. n over n is 1. k. Next step, combine the greatest common factors to write my final answer if possible. I check that what's inside the parentheses is the same. And if it is so, I combine what's outside the parentheses, 8m plus 5n, and multiply it by what's inside the parentheses. Okay. When I showed you the distributive method for multiplication of a binomial times a binomial, I said, hey, take this term times that and write it down. Then take this term times that whole thing and write it down. So you should be able to see that factoring is the opposite of multiplying. And opposite of multiplying is division. So basically, factoring is doing division on um, portions of polynomials. So I, I use division here to come up with my factors. And let's do this last one. 32AH plus 8AK minus 24X squared H 
minus 6x squared k. Step one, parentheses around the first two, parentheses around the last two, plus sign in between the two. Step two, factor out the greatest common factor out of each group. Greatest integer that's in common between 8 and 32 is 8. Write down each variable that appears in every term to its lowest power. A is the only one that appears to every term, and its lowest power is the first. Then do the division to come up with what's inside the parentheses. 32 divided by 8 is 4. A over A is 1. H. 8 divided by 8 is 1. A over A is 1. K. Greatest common factor between negative 24 and negative 6 is going to be negative 6. I'm making it negative because this sign is negative. Then I write down the lowest power of each variable that appears in every term. The only variable that appears in every term is x, and its lowest power is squared. Then do the division. Negative 24 divided by negative 6 is 4. x squared over x squared is x. I mean is 1, and then h. Negative 6 divided by negative 6 is positive 1. K. Last step, combine the greatest common factors to write the final answer if possible. Check what's inside the parentheses. If what's inside the parentheses is the same, then I'm going to combine what's outside the parentheses. And I have it factored. Now here's one thing I want you to notice. I can still pull a greatest common factor out of this, le this le left group. I can pull a 2 out. So if I pull a 2 out, I'm going to le be left with 4a minus 3x squared times the 4h plus k. Right now, if I just tell you to factor by grouping, you're done right here. If I tell you to factor things completely, you want to factor them completely by making sure you have any common factors pulled out all the way out. And you could have pulled that 2 out in the first step before you did any of the other work because 2 goes into every single one of those terms and you would have been able to pull that 2 out. So that's factoring by grouping. We use it on four-term polynomials. Not every four-term polynomial is can be factored by grouping. And you're also going to see that I can use it on some three-term polynomials that I split apart the middle term to turn it into a four-term polynomial, which will let me factor it by grouping, which will be in one of the future video lessons.